Hey all of you, I hope all of you are fine, everyone is doing good. So today we are going to see a very delicate case uh, which is collision, how does it look like from center of mass reference frame. We have done plenty of stuff uh, regarding collision from ground reference frame. So this is the first time we are going to see that how collision indeed looks like from center of mass reference frame and in this particular class I have come up with the detailed presentation and every single minute calculation that I could have done so that the situation can become easy for you. So without wasting much time let us proceed. So here you can see there is a mass m1 initially it is progressing with velocity v10 towards another mass m2 which is initially at rest so it is not moving. Now I am considering this is a hidden collision. So when the collision takes place right after the collision the mass m1 moves in this direction with velocity v1f and mass m2 moves in the opposite direction with velocity v2f. I hope this situation is clear to everyone. Alright. Now let us see. So if I apply conservation of linear momentum from ground reference frame along x axis. So what will I see? Initially the particle was moving with velocity v1 naught. So that will be the initial momentum that is m1 into v1 naught. All right. And the final momentum, it will have two components. So in this direction, we will have the x component. And in this particular direction, this is the x component. And in this direction, we will have the y component, right? Similarly, for m2 v2, in this direction, we will have the x component. And in this direction, we will have the y component. All right, fine. So that's how it looks like from ground reference frame. So if I write the equation, the equation will now look like along x axis m1 v1 0 plus 0 y0 because this mass is at rest initially. That will be equal to what? That will be equal to along x axis the x component of this momentum. How much it will be? That is m1 v1 f cos theta. And for this also positive in the same direction that is m2 v2 f cos theta 2. All right, fine. So what will be along y axis? Along y axis initial momentum is 0 as they are moving along x axis. This mass m is moving along x axis only. So there is no momentum along y. All right. And m2 was already at rest. So it will not have any momentum in that direction. All right, fine. Now, let's proceed. So here you can see that along y axis, the momentum is turning out to be 0 plus 0 is equal to m1 v1 f sin theta 1 that is m1 v1 f sin theta 1 in that direction and m2 v2 f sin theta 2 it will be opposite that's why the negative sign is coming this negative sign is coming because these two momentum are oppositely directed all right fine now so this is the situation that we observe from the ground reference frame but we are not interested to see the situation how it happens in ground reference frame we are interested what happens with respect to center of mass reference frame so before going into this particular problem what we have done here we have tried to draw an analogy if there is a two particle system which is moving in a plane let us say xy plane then what are the corresponding coordinates or what are the corresponding velocities of those two particles will be with respect to the center of mass reference frame so let us go for the calculation See, by the formula, we know that center of mass coordinate is given by m1 r1 vector plus m2 r2 vector by m1 plus m2. I have assumed here is the m1, here is m2. r1, this particular value is the coordinate of b with respect to ground. r2 is the coordinate of m2 with respect to ground and r vector is the coordinate of m1 with respect to m2 or we can say the separation between them as observed from the ground. So if I take this vector uh, triangle that is OAB from the triangle OAB, you can check here that R2 vector from the triangle law vector addition, R2 vector is in that direction. This is R2 vector. In this direction, you are having R vector and the resultant here it is R1 vector. So we can write R2 vector plus R vector is equal to R1 vector. So from there, 
we got a relation that is r vector equal to r1 vector minus r2 vector correct we will proceed if i substitute this result now in equation 1 so we will get the value of r1 and r2 so you see i have substituted the value of r2 in equation 1 and then we are getting r1 vector equal to r vector plus m2 by m1 plus m2 into r vector right that is important we are substituting the value of r2 from equation 2 into equation 1 correct i hope this is clear to you whenever you have any doubt in the calculation you can simply pause the screen and check the calculation everything i have written in detail right in the similar way if you substitute the value of r1 into equation number 1 you are going to get the value of r2 and r2 how much you are getting that is capital r vector minus m1 by m2 m1 by m1 plus m2 into r vector so here capital r vector on both these equations is simply referring the center of mass coordinate with respect to ground now we already know it's a simple idea that for a two particle system the reduced mass of the system is given by m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 right remember it is only for two particle system had it been n particle system so in case of n particle system the same equation would have been given by 1 by mu is equal to 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 and the term would have been continued to n number of terms but that is not the thing that we require here here we are having only two particle so for a two particle system reduced mass is m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 so i can suitably modify this equation 3 and 4 into the terms of reduced mass you see here if i multiply with m1 and divide with m1 now this quantity m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 becomes reduced mass so this r1 vector will look like r vector plus mu by m1 into r vector all right similarly i can multiply by m2 and divide by m2 then this is actually turning up to be reduced mass so r2 vector will term to be r vector capital r vector minus mu by m2 into r vector correct so this is a very simple thing that is easy to understand okay we have to keep all these equations into our mind next so these all values if you check about equation number one two three four and this equation finally on the box again this entire thing whatever calculation we are doing in this page is essentially from ground frame these all calculations are with respect to ground reference frame now we will check what happens if we observe from center of mass reference frame see we are now going to observe this point x point x is nothing but center of mass point x is referring center of mass and this bracket notation you are seeing here it is used basically to denote that something is calculated with respect to center of mass reference frame for your convenience when i am writing r1 vector bracket it is denoting the position vector of m1 with respect to center of mass that is at point x i hope this is clear to you so bracket term is being um, used here to denote something or a quantity it may be position vector it may be velocity vector but that thing will be calculated with respect to center of mass so again we will apply the triangle law of vector addition you look at triangle oxa this is triangle oxa so in this triangle this is one vector that you can see as r vector this is r2 bracket vector this is r2 bracket vector and the resultant here is given by r2 vector simple to understand right i have written everything over here so from triangle oxa capital r vector plus r2 bracket vector is equal to r2 vector all right fine are you understanding right next from here i get r2 bracket vector equal to r2 vector minus r vector we already got the value of r2 here this is the value of r2 that we got capital r vector minus mu by m2 into r vector if i substitute then r2 bracket vector is coming minus of mu by m2 into r vector 
in the similar fashion exactly same calculation if i apply for this triangle that is triangle oxb for this triangle if i apply i will get r1 vector bracket equal to mu by m1 into r vector right so these are the two position coordinate that we have calculated with respect to center of mass reference frame now if i simply differentiate with respect to time these two equations now here we will get velocity of m2 with respect to center of mass and from here we will get the velocity of m1 with respect to center of mass right now these two values are very interesting if i cross multiply this m2 over here i will get what i will get m2 into v2 bracket vector equal to minus mu into v vector essentially this v vector is basically the relative velocity between m1 and m2 all right if i cross multiply this m1 term here what will i get i will get m1 v1 vector is equal to plus mu into v vector so you see p2 vector here p2 vector is coming to be minus mu into v vector and p1 vector is coming to be plus mu into v vector so this is the linear momentum of m2 with respect to center of mass and this is the linear momentum of m1 with respect to center of mass if i add them what will i get i will get total linear momentum of the system just after the collision right so if i calculate that if i calculate that what is the value that i am getting i am getting plus mu into v vector minus mu into v vector is equal to 0 and we were supposed to get it because we know that center of mass reference frame is also referred as zero momentum frame this is known to us all right center of mass reference frame is known as zero momentum frame why because the moment you are observing the motion of the system from center of mass so the momentum of center of mass with respect to center of mass has to be zero so we got the correct proceeding as of now now i am going back to the previous equation once again that is r1 vector vector in bracket is equal to r1 vector minus capital r vector differentiating this is the result you are going to get v1 bracket vector is equal to v1 vector minus v center of mass what is v center of mass v center of mass is equal to m1 v1 vector plus 0 by m1 plus m2 so from there v center of mass can be written like this it's a very simple thing right now we will go back to a vector diagram you just go back to the vector diagram what does it tell it tells that velocity of a particle with respect to ground is equal to velocity of the particle with respect to center of mass plus velocity of center of mass with respect to ground we have used this result over here think about particle one then i can write velocity of the particle with respect to ground is equal to velocity of the particle with respect to center of mass plus velocity of center of mass so it's a simple triangle now i have drawn that triangle here you can see that this particular vector here it is denoting this v1 vector in bracket then this is velocity of center of mass so this will denote the resultant so from the triangle pst this is p pst so from the triangle pst we can write tan theta 1 is basically equal to perpendicular what is this perpendicular this one is the perpendicular over here that is st divided by this entire thing is the base but base is divided into two part that is py plus yt simple trigo you are applying so st is equal to this much st is nothing but this much that is how much st is basically equal to qy so how much is qy qy is v1 bracket sin phi from this triangle this value from where i got from the triangle of pqy all right and this py is equal to v1 bracket cos phi plus v of center of mass now next is calculation only i will divide this by v1 bracket so we get sin phi divided by cos phi plus v center of mass by v1 bracket i will substitute the value of v1 bracket right we got the value of v1 bracket you can check it over here that this is the v1 bracket we got so if i substitute the value over here 
we will get sin phi divided by cos phi plus m1 into v center of mass by mu v. Now a little bit of calculation. Again, I'm leaving this calculation part to you because all I want is your active engagement. If you are not engaged into the calculation, you will not get the crux of this matter. So I want you people to be deeply engaged. That's why I have left only this minute part of the calculation. So there 10 theta one will come eventually sine phi divided by cos phi plus m1 v0 divided by m2 vf. Now there will be two very interesting results which you can directly apply in an exam like GE advance. That is if the collision is elastic now. So if the collision is elastic, then the relative speed must remain unchanged. So that means initial speed v0 must be equal to vf. If I substitute the value v0 and vf to be equal, this result will shrunk to tan theta 1 is equal to sin phi divided by cos phi plus m1 by m2. Furthermore, if it is told that the collision is elastic and the masses are also equal, then in that case, we will simply substitute m1 is equal to m2. So if I substitute m1 equal to m2 in this equation, then m1 m2 will be equal. Trigonometric identity will be followed and we will get theta 1 is equal to phi by 2. Awesome. A very interesting result. You can directly apply if you know this theory right otherwise if you have to derive this particular thing inside the class to get the answer it will be better luck next time right so this is a very interesting thing i hope you have enjoyed the problem that's why you always say it is always fun and love to do physics thanks all hope to come with many more genuine things in near future thank you